Glad to be in the house of God today. Amen. Amen. Why don't we stand and go before the Lord in prayer this morning. Let's stand, lifting up holy hands unto the Lord today. Let's invite the presence of God into this service. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, loving God, right now. We come before your throne of mercy and grace today. We thank you for waking us up this morning, God. Thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you. Lord, we invite your presence into this place today, into our hearts, Lord. Have your way, Lord. We just look to you, Father, to bless and meet every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, our cup is lifted. Fill it one more time, we pray. And we ask it in the name that is above every name, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We ask your blessing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord today. Are you washed in the blood? Page 236.
overnight, but he's here this morning ready to bless. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. To touch our lives and to help us to draw closer to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for, for the fact that our hope in this world, that our, our hope is not just in this world, but one of these days we'll be in glory. Amen. 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 Those, the, 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 the hope of this, the, the, the hope of the, the world, the only hope that they have is what they have in this world or what they see. Amen. Not knowing that there is a Savior that they can surrender their lives to, give their lives to, and knowing that they will give them not just the hope of, of what's in this world, but also the, the hope of glory and being in His presence. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Giving a life, not just any life, but life more abundant. Amen. Amen. Life more abundant. Hallelujah. Yeah, just thankful for the opportunity again to be in the house of the Lord this morning. We welcome each and every one of you. Just let you, let God have His way. Those of you online, we also welcome you as well. Amen. Join in the service, amen? If you're amen. online, comment, say hello. Let us know that you, you, you tuned in, yes. amen? Because we see a lot of views, but only two, three, four people might comment. So let us know that you're there, amen? Say amen. amen. Say something. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Cool. But thanks for everyone here this morning. Be mindful of our schedule. We do have our services, our regular services tonight at 630 and then our Bible study at, on Tuesdays at 7.30. And then we will have our Christmas service on Christmas Eve this Thursday Amen. at 7.30. Amen. And then come be blessed. We'll have our gift, gift exchange at that time. Um, we look forward to seeing you. Amen. Yes. Thursday at 7.30. Praise the Lord. Amen. At this time, of our ushers will come. We'll receive our Sunday morning offering and tithe. We know that all Christians pay tithe and faithfully given the offering. Amen. Praise the Lord. And just to help you in your offering, if you're just giving an offering, if you're just offering it's not tied or anything, you do not have to put it in the envelope. Yeah. You do not have to put it in the envelope. You just put it in the offering itself. The envelope itself is to, to mark if it's a tithe or it's another special offering, whatever the case may be, but just to, to help you so that you won't be rushing to try to put something in the envelope when it doesn't need to be. Amen? Amen. But we're thankful for everyone that yes. is giving the offering. Yes. And then paying their tithe faithfully. Praise God will bless you according to your gifts. Yes. Brother John, will you pray for the offering? Heavenly Father, thank you for the Sunday morning breakfast. Amen. Amen. Amen.
the offering. God bless you. Amen. It's our prayer.
Oh, magnify him today. God, we worship you. We bless your name. Amen. Lord, your goodness. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the promise that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Lord, we give you praise. You've been faithful. You've been good, Lord. You've been real, God, and we worship you today. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your presence, loving God, in this place and in our lives this morning, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you are worthy. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We love you today, Jesus. We just worship you today, Lord. We acknowledge your faithfulness, Lord. We acknowledge your hand of blessing, your hand of grace in our lives, Lord. You're the reason, Lord, we are where we are, God. We give you the honor and the praise, Lord. We lift our voices to you today, Lord. For the sacrifice of praise, Lord, continually. Oh, hallelujah. 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 The goodness of God. Amen. Yes, amen. Isn't God good this morning? Amen. Yes. amen. Hallelujah. 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 I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. What a blessing it is to be able to sing about the goodness of the Lord this morning. Amen. amen. To, to be able to live. In the goodness of God, amen. amen, to experience the goodness of God, amen. It's much better to experience it uh, than to sing about it, amen. 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 Uh, and if you're here today and you don't know that, that goodness of God we're singing about, you don't know why we're happy, and you don't know why we get excited, and just open your heart. Taste and see that the Lord is good this morning. Amen. Amen. Open your heart to Him. Yes. Give your heart to Him. Come to Jesus today. And you'll see what the goodness of God is all about. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. And live a life for Him and for His glory, yeah. and you won't regret it. Amen. Amen. You won't regret it. It's good to be in God's house this morning once again. We're glad that you all are here. Let's just open our hearts to the Lord. Let, let the Lord bless you real good this morning. Amen. 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 In this, what, second to last Sunday of the year, two more weeks, mm. and goodbye, 2020. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hopefully, it's hello 2021. Amen. 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 God is faithful. Amen. Amen. He's faithful. Amen. And uh, we know God is in control. Yes. Amen. No matter what, God is in control. Yeah. And so we recognize that. Amen. And I'm just glad to be in God's house this morning. We're glad you're here. Uh, just be mindful. There is quite a bit of stuff next door, some meats and some sweets. Uh, that we're giving out. We also have two boxes of veggies outside. If you see them on the benches, they're out there for refrigeration purposes. And so uh, take some bags with you on the way out. There's vegetables, broccoli, some fruit in those boxes out on the benches. So that's why they're out there. Uh, feel free to pass by and grab, grab something on your way out. All right. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. Looking forward to Christmas Eve service this week as well. Christmas Eve worship is it's always a blessing as we recognize the reason of the season. Yes. Amen. And take time to recognize the reason of the season. Amen. And so we are doing our gift exchange. If you have not picked a name yet, uh, do that today before you leave. Um, we draw names for those that signed up for the gift exchange. Uh, make sure you pick a name uh, because if you put your name down, that means someone got you, right? It got your name. And so if you're part of that, make sure you get the name so you can get the gift and you don't leave anybody hanging on Christmas. All right. All right. Praise God. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 1 this morning. Isaiah chapter 1. And we will read a few verses here. Isaiah chapter 1. Who, anybody want some good advice this morning? Amen. Nobody? Amen. Two yeah. people want good advice this morning? Three? Four? It's a trap. It's not a trap. Right? <laughs> <laughs> would I ever do that? Would I ever, would I ever set anybody up like that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you're right. I'm going to give it to you anyway. <laughs> Whenever you're quoting scripture, it's important that you quote the right scripture. 
or whenever you're maybe sending a text to somebody or maybe giving somebody a verse of encouragement in an email or a text or something like that. Uh, and it's a funny story, a true story. I was texting with my mother this week, and we were making comments back and forth, and I quoted uh, what I thought was from Proverbs chapter 31, verse 18, um, that says, her children rise up and call her blessed. And that's what I text to her and uh, sent it to my mother, and she responded to me. Um, she said, she said, what? I said, did, did you mean 31 verse 18? You know, and not 30 verse 18? And I looked up 30 verse 18. What I had actually said to her was, uh, in, in Proverbs 30, uh, was it 18? It wasn't 30, 18. It was 20, 28. I'm sorry, 28. The spider taketh hold with her hands <laughs> and is in king's palaces. And I said that to my mom. She said, what, am I a spider? <laughs> it was funny. We had a laugh. And I thought, that's a good illustration right there. Make sure you're quoting the right chapter and the right verse. It was 31:28. Her children rise up and call her blessed. <laughs> Amen. 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 Isaiah chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 1, and just a few verses here, a few verses here. Oh, we're glad to have Sister Hank here with us on the way from Washington again. We're glad she's here. That's Brian's sister. Amen. We're glad she's here and they're here for, for some family business. Unfortunately, her aunt, her aunt passed away. Um, she was, well, how old, Sister? 90 something? She was 79. 79. Oh, I got the numbers switched. Yeah. 79. She's been been in hospice, having some trouble, and so pray for you, sister. Pray for your family, and uh, say a prayer for the Hank family. And then Hank and the Hennigers, really, the Henniger. You know, Hank is her mate or her married name now. Maiden name is Henniger. So be in prayer for them. Amen. Let's read in Isaiah chapter one, Isaiah one verse sixteen. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Yes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Amen. 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 Reading again verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Amen. And I want to preach with the help of the Lord today about messages in the snow yes. messages in the snow Amen. let us pray and ask god's blessing at this time uh, reverend aristazabo please will you stand and pray yes, sir. Well, we're thankful for your goodness and your word this morning and most of all that we can come to a place to hear your word and to hear your preaching to draw closer to you yes let your will be done Jesus. in each and every heart and life lord let them be ready to receive what you have for us. Let their ears be ready to hear. And for everything that is accomplished, for every heart that is touched, every soul that is saved, we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to preach to you today with the help of the Lord about messages in the snow. Messages in the snow. prophet said, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. I'm going to use that today as a text and as a foundation for the message that the Lord has laid upon my heart. We know that uh, we just had a nice snowfall this last week. So beautiful. Some of you may agree. Some of you may not agree with different things about the snow. But there's some messages in the snow. 
that not only we see in nature, but we also see it from the perspective of God Himself. God Himself uses snow to convey a message to His people and to mankind. Amen. It was the other day that we were at the bus stop waiting for the bus, my daughter and I, and I, it was freshly fallen snow, and so there was a thin layer on the sidewalk there while we were waiting and we, instead of just standing there shivering in the cold, we began to play around with it. And I began to doodle some uh, picture in the snow on the sidewalk. Uh, and she began to join in and write some things. And we wrote, Jade was here. And uh, being silly about it, Jade put the date. Uh, I think she put it, was it, uh, uh, what day was it? Uh, 12, what's today? 20th? She put 12... 17, instead of 2020, she put COVID there. I don't know where she got that from. She said 12, uh, 17, COVID. And she began to write these. And I took some pictures of it, and it was, it was fun. And, and, you know, I sent the pictures. I shared it with some people. And someone made the comment, you know, just kind of in passing, I like the pictures and what you sent, and really like the messages in the snow. And it just kind of hit me when I, when I heard that word, God by the Holy Spirit began to give me a word about this, about messages in the snow. And uh, usually every time that it does snow, I think about what the Bible says. How that long time ago through the prophet Isaiah, he spoke to his people and began to use snow as a picture of a cleansing and a purity that God wanted to bring to his people. He wanted to bring a cleansing and purity because at that particular time their sins were dirty. Their sins were unclean in the eyes of God. And he begins to liken the snow as a comparison to the scarlet, red, deep, dark color of the sins of mankind. And he began to prophesy really and give an invitation to the people of God. And in that he really gave a message to them in the snow. Hallelujah. Amen. He gave a message in the snow. And today God uses things to send messages to His people. He uses things to speak to us all over creation. Ever since the beginning, God has used different means to convey messages to mankind. He uses preachers, yes. He uses prophets, yes. He uses uh, His Word, yes. But many times He even uses His creation to preach a message to us. Amen. 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 Psalm 19, verse 1, you've probably heard before. A psalm of David, the heavens declare the glory of God. Amen. Amen. And the firmament showeth His handiwork. You ever stopped and taken a moment to look at the sunrise, if you're up that early, or the sunset, uh, if you're just waking up, and you see the beauty of God's creation. Amen. Amen. We see it in the heavens. We see that the heavens, as the Bible says, declares the glory of God. Yeah. Who else can paint a picture like God can? Amen. Who else can make things so majestic uh, like God today? Picasso and Van Gogh and all of these uh, artists through the years, they can never come close to uh, duplicating uh, what God Himself has done. Amen. Amen. Like it's been said, there's a lot of imitations, but there's only one real thing today, yes. and that is God. Amen. He's the real thing. Amen. And He creates things, and He gives messages to people, and He speaks to us in many ways. If we're willing to stop and listen. Yes. If we're willing to receive the message that God is speaking to us. Yes. And have ears to hear as the Bible says. And hearts to receive. Yes. That's really what Jesus was talking about. He that hath ears to hear. Let him hear yes. what the Spirit of the Lord says. Amen. Amen. He wasn't saying if you're not deaf. If you have a physical hearing. But do you really have a heart that has a willingness and a receptiveness to it. To where you're listening. Your ears are open. You're paying attention. You're, you're always listening with an ear for what God wants to speak into your life. Amen? Amen? You have an ear to hear. What is the Spirit of God saying? What is God doing in my life? Even today, hopefully you came with a prayerful heart before you came or while you're here. God, speak to me in this service today. 
What is it that God wants to say to me? And God, give me ears to hear the message that I don't leave the same way that I came in. Because God's speaking today. Amen. He's speaking and He's giving a message to His people. We know He uses different things to convey messages. We recently shared in the book of Daniel during the Bible study about uh, when God spoke with handwriting on a wall one time. And he spoke, he wrote messages on the wall and the plaster to King Belshazzar because God wanted to bring and was going to bring an accountability and judgment to this evil king. We even know that God spoke through a donkey one day with the prophet Balaam and the donkey actually spoke back to the man after he smote his donkey one too many times and the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and it began to speak to him and that donkey spoke a message to the prophet. Amen. Amen. If animals could speak today, they would, they would be filled with all kinds of messages. Amen. Amen. Especially some yes. of these people that uh, have abused their dogs and cats and all these other things. If God would just loosen the tongue of the animals of mankind, they'd be preaching all kinds of things. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Some people are probably glad their animals can't speak. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And a rooster even preached one time to Peter. As the cock crew, as Peter denied the Lord, God used that as a message, a message to Peter, amen, to confirm the word of God in his own life. Amen. What are the messages today that we receive from snow, though? What is it about snow that speaks to us? And how is it that we can gain some wisdom from God, the, 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 the natural beauty of snow when it falls? And if you're one today that just hates snow and you detest it and you don't want to hear about it, it's a four-letter word to you and you don't like it when it's here, you can't wait for it to leave, uh, just put that aside for just about half an hour, all right? And, and just receive a message from it. Amen. Amen. Receive a message. Just clear your head from the fact that you hate it and complain about it and just let God speak to you, all right? There's a message in the snow today. And we read in several places where God symbolizes snow or uses it as purity or a symbol of purity. Amen. For really, what is as white as snow, yes. as the Bible says? You can't get close to the whiteness and the purity of snow when it falls and blankets the ground. It's even so pure and so white that when the sun shines in the right way, it's too bright to even look at. And you've got to put your shades on because it'll blind you. In fact, people even get what is called snow blindness uh, if they look at the snow for too long because of its purity and the whiteness of it. Well, God uses this to tell mankind that there is a purity. There is a whiteness. There is a clean, there's a clean, a clean, a cleaning or cleansing that God is able to bring to the hearts and minds of people that would surrender to Him and to His Word. Oh, hallelujah. Because we already know, as the prophet said, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. There is a difference today between clean and unclean. Amen? There's a difference between right and wrong. And I think that's important to remember and establish that whenever we're approaching God and looking at His Word, there's always a difference. Amen? There's no gray area. There's no area where you, you don't really know if this is right or if this is wrong. God makes it clear in His Word, Thou shalt not and thou shalt. Amen? He makes it clear in matters of importance what we should do, what we should not do. Do. And the one that brings confusion isn't God. The one that brings confusion is the enemy of our soul. As the Bible says, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as it is in all the churches of God. If you're confused this morning, I want you to know the devil's involved somewhere. If you're confused, if things are unclear, and you just don't know where to go and what to do, and you have a confused mind and heart, it's time to rebuke the devil, resist Satan's Submit yourself to God, and guess what? The good news is that the devil will flee. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And you'll find a clarity and a peace of mind that only God can give. But let's look at three messages here in the snow. Uh, the first message that I want to convey today is that uh, the messages, message in the snow is, first of all, slow down. Mm. Huh. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yes. 
The first message we receive in the snow is slow down. Amen. You're already thinking, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Every season we read the reports in the winter time of some accidents. Cars sliding off the road. Recently read about a pileup on I-94, a pileup. Uh, 29 vehicles just crashed into each other, and that's a small number compared to some that have happened in the past where people are going down the highway and the snow begins to fall and things get cold and people don't slow down. And when they don't slow down and they're not cautious, what happens? They hit the brakes, they can't stop soon enough, they crash into the car in front of them and it causes a chain reaction and all these cars crash, 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 and it's a pile up literally and they're very dangerous and very terrible when they happen. But the first message today in snow, and I believe God wants us to hear, is slow down. Yes. He spoke to the prophet. He said, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. God was speaking to the people and saying, now come on. Let's take a few moments and let's talk about this. And whenever God says, come now, or gives an invitation, he's telling the people, let's take a moment and just stop what you're doing and let's, let's think about this and let's reason this thing out. Amen. Because so many times uh, uh, in life when things happen, we want to do things right away. We want to respond right away. We want to do things right away because we don't like waiting as human beings. Amen? Amen. We don't like waiting. We want it now. We want to do it now. We want it quick. We want it instant. Uh, hurry up, preacher. I even have lunch to go to today. Don't take too long, pastor, and go over time. No, no, that wouldn't happen, right? <laughs> But how many times is it that we go too fast in life and things happen and we break things and we crash things and we make mistakes? The message in the snow is what slow down. Most people that slip, fall, twist their ankles, fall on the ice. All of these most of the time happens because people are going too fast and they're not exercising caution and they're not being careful about the conditions that are surrounding them. Amen. Amen. Most of the time, this is what happens. Even the other day, shoveling snow. I was shoveling it across my park, uh, the driveway at our house, and I was going a little bit too fast because even I myself like to do things fast, get it done in a hurry, and I started to slip, and I almost slipped. I almost did a, a split. Thank God I didn't. I almost did a split, like, whoa. And I caught myself, and I said, wait a minute, and I told myself, slow down. <laughs> slow down. And really, God began to deal with me about this because so many things in society, in our lives, in relationships, and in serving God in general, so many mistakes are made because we don't slow down. Amen. We don't stop and reason. We don't stop and take time with God and reason things out and even just go before God in prayer. But because we want things done, we want it fast, we want a solution, we rush into things and even make foolish decisions without slowing down and getting the wisdom and the guidance of Almighty God. Amen. 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 What does the Bible tell us? Even God today is slow. Amen. He's slow to anger, full of compassion, and of great mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 145, verse 8. Aren't you glad that the Lord is slow sometimes? Amen. Aren't you glad the Lord is long-suffering and His mercy endures forever? That He doesn't strike us down the first time we make a mistake, and He doesn't judge us every time we do something wrong, or like Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts, they did something wrong, and God smote them. They, God killed them and they were laid out flat uh, there in Acts. Uh, and the Bible says it was instant judgment. Uh, but God's not doing that today because of His mercy and because of His grace. Uh, he's slow to anger. He's slow to wrath. Amen. Uh, he gives us time to repent. Uh, he gives us time to make it right with Him uh, because He loves us today. Because it says uh, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, uh, but is long-suffering to usward, uh, not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. Aren't you glad God waits, and God is slow, and God gives us grace, even though we don't deserve it? Amen! That's the goodness of God today. Oh, hallelujah! And shouldn't we have the same kind of slow reaction to people 
when they do us wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll rejoice about God's mercy and God's grace. And He didn't do what He didn't give us what we deserve. Mm -hmm. Should not we show that same mercy and compassion to people? Y'all quiet. Did I get the wrong church this morning? Y'all quiet. Do we not believe that? Do we not believe that? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You want mercy? Then show mercy. Amen. You want grace? Then show grace. Amen. If you want patience, then be patient. Amen. Amen. You want people to be kind? Then be kind. Yes. I'm talking about a message in the snow today. Amen. Come now, saith the Lord, and reason yes. this thing out. Amen. Amen. Reason this thing out. Be slow, the Bible says. Let's go on. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Amen. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Amen. Proverbs 16, verse 32. Amen. James 1, verse 19 says, excuse me, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Amen. Be swift, be quick, he says, to hear, to listen, to, to, to be advised, to receive instruction. But be slow, on the other hand, to speak even. Be slow to speak. Be slow to open your mouth. Be slow to respond. Be slow to give a piece of your mind. Be slow to really share how you're feeling. Amen. Be slow to really say what you think you need to say. But if you stop and you're slow, the Spirit of God will say, No, don't say it. Bite your tongue. You don't need to go there. When you're a Christian, remember who you are in Christ. Remember what Jesus did. He turned the other cheek. He wasn't quick to speak, but he was slow to speak. Amen? Amen. And slow to wrath. This is what the Bible is teaching us. Yeah. I believe the beauty of the snow is exactly that when it falls. And, and it even seemed the other day after the snow fell, it just even seemed that everything was just so quiet. Because you know snow slows everything down, doesn't oh, yeah. it? After it falls and blankets everything and you get up and go outside and even it even feels more peaceful when you go outside and you just listen. And sometimes there's nothing, maybe a bird or two, but it's just peaceful and everything's slowed down, right? And I believe God speaks a message to us that there's seasons where we just need to slow down yes. and be slow to speak and swift to hear because God's speaking something to us. Amen. Amen. We should be slow to speak, slow to anger, slow to jump into conclusions, yes. slow to judging others. Slow to quitting. Amen? Amen? Slow to complaining. Hallelujah. Amen. Slow. Be the one that God speaks about. Be, be sober. Be vigilant. Uh, because your adversary, the devil, is seeking whom he may devour. But he says, be sober. Amen? Be, be, be quick. Have the mind of Christ. Amen? The mind of Christ that, that is slow to judging but is quick to listen because you know you're abiding in a place where God has called you. Now, if you're a Christian today, God's called us to abide in that secret place. Amen? You like the psalm in Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Almighty shall, shall, shall abide in the shadow of, of the Almighty. And he talks about that secret place being hidden in God. Now really in Christ today, that's our position. Amen? We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Amen. We're pilgrims. We're traveling through. We, we may be here, but we're protected. And we're called to stay in that, in that protective boundary that God has set for us. Amen? Amen. He has us in His hand, the Bible says. Jesus spoke. And He said, My Father has you in His hand. And He said, No man is able to pluck you out of My Father's hand. Amen. You see, that's the good news of God today. We don't have to go outside of that boundary and think we have to be quick and rush to things in life because God has it all in control. He said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So somebody lies, somebody cheats, somebody does something. Just be slow, brother and sister. Put it in the hands of God because God knows what He's doing. He just abide in His peace. Abide in His love. Abide in His grace. Do you need to slow down? Do you need to slow down? 
Amen. Be slow. Not only is there slowing down that we see, but a message also that I get from this in the snow is a message that in snow there are similarities. Mm -hmm. There are similarities, but differences. Amen. They say that there's no snowflake. There's not one snowflake that's like another. That each snowflake is different. Each snowflake is different. And when you look at them, they look similar, but there's no way that they could be exactly the same because of the way that they crystallize and the way that they form. And they say that there's not no two snowflakes alike. They may look like it, but really they're different. Oh, yeah. And when you let that speak to you today and apply it to our lives, the Bible also says that there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. The Bible tells us there's no difference. What does that mean to us? Well, he didn't mention uh, African and Asian. <laughs> he didn't say, he didn't say uh, Chinese or Puerto Rican here. No, He didn't. But it's included in the scripture, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Amen. And really, we follow the category of the Greeks anyway, for they were Gentile people. People that were not a Jew were considered Gentiles. And what does Paul say? There's no difference. Amen. Amen. There's no difference. We live in a world where, where we're trying to, there's so much division and so much discrepancy. And you're different and you're different and you're this way and you're that way. And we're so divided in this world in which we live today. We're separated. We're uh, separated. We're segregated and all these differences. And my people are my people and your people are your people. But I like what Ruth said, uh, amen, uh, that one day to Naomi, your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Because she understood there was something that united them and that was God. Nationality didn't matter. Amen. Heritage didn't matter. It has its place, but in God there's only one body, one church, one people. And he says this here in the Bible that the same Lord over all is rich unto who? He's rich unto all that would call upon him. Amen. You're different, but the similarities are there. None of us are the same, but we have similarities. We have a common denominator, if you will. The Bible says, and as we receive this message from the snow, they're similar, but they're different. So it is with man. The Bible tells us all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. All have sinned. A double L. There's not one person that can say, I've never sinned and I'm not guilty and I've never lied and I've never cheated and I've never stolen. In fact, John the Apostle said, if man says he's never sinned, he's a liar. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But so many times we act like we've never done wrong, but everyone else is always wrong. Amen. That's how convoluted the truth gets. And that's how convoluted it gets when people don't have the mind of Christ. Yeah. Everyone's wrong but me. Yeah. Amen. Oh, thank you. Come on. Uh, Everyone's wrong but me. Thank you for the permission. Amen. It's hard to deal with people like that. Isn't it? It's hard to talk to people who can do no wrong. Yes. You can't deal with them. Yeah. You can't reason with them. Isn't that what God was trying to do with the people? Come now, let us reason together, say the Lord. Yeah. Some people are just unreasonable, unfortunately. They're not reasonable. They won't listen to reason, as the expression goes. Because they haven't made up in their mind. Mm -hmm. They're right. You're wrong. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you say. Yeah. Doesn't matter that there are five witnesses. Mm -hmm. Or 5,000 witnesses. Yeah. Come on now. Amen. We're right and you're wrong. Yes. And you can try to reason. Mm. You can turn blue in the face. Mm. You can bring up all the witnesses and all the people. 
But there's some people that because of their stubbornness and their pride, they will yes. not surrender. Amen. They will Amen. not say, Amen. you're right. Mm. I'm wrong. Mm. <coughs> right? Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Everybody point their finger at me. Put your finger at me. Everybody point your finger at me. Like, yeah, you, Pastor, you. You. You said something I didn't like last Sunday. You. Now hold your finger. I didn't tell you to put your finger down. Put your finger and look, look at your hand. Yeah. Look at your hand. Uh -huh. If you put your finger at me, how many more are pointing back at you? <laughs> Three or four? I don't know. Oh, four. I can't twist my thumb around that far. Right? Yeah. At least. So there's three more reasons to look at yourself than there is to look at me. At least. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes people don't accept the differences. Mm -hmm. yeah. People have a hard time accepting differences. Yes. But we all need grace. Yeah. We all, as Romans says, have come short of the glory of God. We all are imperfect. We all are going to stand before God one day. Amen. And the good news of God and the reasonableness of God is that if you would just come and reason with me, I'll make it right. Amen. 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 God is saying to the people, if you just come and reason with me, this issue, this deep thing, this problem in your life that is red as scarlet and is just red, it's dirty, it's wrong. God is saying, if you just come and reason with me, Amen. I'll give you, I got a deal for you. Yes. I got a deal for you. You can exchange that for something as white as snow. You can take that thing that's dirty, unclean, and that is wrong, God is saying, and you can exchange it for something that is pure. Amen. And God was trying to speak to the people. And He gives us a message that, that the differences shouldn't divide us, but we should learn that the differences aren't so different that they bring disunity. If anything, when you look at the snow and as it falls, they're all separate snowflakes. But when you look at it, the way that it falls, it's all, it, it forms a blanket, doesn't it? There's a unity there that becomes one wherever it falls. Even though they're different, they become one and it creates something that is so beautiful to even look at. Our uniqueness today does not make us better than anybody else. Because all of us are the same before the eyes of God. And even in 1 Corinthians he said, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Someone said amen. amen. Even though we, we all have sinned, we all have these things, we all even go through similar things in life. Amen. amen. We have, there's no temptation or test that comes to our life that is not common. Someone else is going through it. Someone else is experiencing it. Someone else knows. Amen. amen. You, 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 amen. You're not the only one today. And that's what the devil wants people to feel like they're isolated. They're the only one. Because the devil's job is to separate, to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to isolate you and make you feel like you're all alone. You're the only one going through this and your situation is so unique that no one else will understand. But the devil is a liar today. Amen. Every temptation, the Bible says that God is faithful. Who will with it, with it make a way to escape. Amen. Amen. I'm glad God knows how to make a way this morning. No matter what we face, what we go through, no matter what hard time may be presented before us, we look to the faithfulness of God because God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He'll open a door. He'll make a way in the wilderness because he's God today and his compassion and his love for us is to not see us die in the wilderness but to make it all the way to the promised land. And he uses his word. He uses his spirit. He gives us his promises that we would come to realization, hey, God's love is great and his mercy is bountiful. All I need to do is give it to God and he'll work it out. Amen. 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 Not only are there 
similarities for lastly here, messages in the snow, which perhaps is the greatest message in the snow, and that is the purity and the cleansing that God brings. Sins are cleansed. God said, let us reason together. Our sins before God are dark, they're deep, they're red before a holy and a pure God. The Bible speaks of the picture of Christ. We serve a holy God this morning. Amen? Amen. We, we serve a holy God. Amen. The Bible speaks of Jesus, the appearance of Christ in Revelation chapter 1, that His head and His hair were like white like wool, as white as snow. And His eyes were a flame of fire. You want to know what Jesus looked like? Go right there in Revelation chapter 1. The, the resurrected Savior, the glorified Christ, as He appears in Revelation is just glowing white as snow and eyes a flame of fire. God's a pure God today. Amen. Amen. He's a holy God. But He had to come down to where man was and get down to where our level is in order to do the work of salvation and accomplish reconciliation for mankind. This is why God amen, gave him the form, the form, came in the form of Christ. We're celebrating His birth this week about how Christ came and He was born in a manger and He came into that little town of Bethlehem. We're singing about it. We're, we're talking about it. We look at this gift of God and the reason why he came in the form of a servant and humbled himself and became obedient unto death, the Bible says, even the death of the cross. He was sinless, but yet he came. Amen. He was perfect, but yet he came. He was pure, but yet he came. Why? That the righteous may die for the unrighteous, that the clean may pay the price for the unclean, that those that are lost may be found, that those that are wrong might be made right. And that's the message that God gives. That you can be right. You can be pure. You can be clean today if you just come to God through Jesus Christ. You can. There's cleansing. There's forgiveness. There's pardon today. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. He said in Romans chapter 4, verse 7. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. When you make the statement, when people ask you how you're doing, and you say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. What do you really mean when you say that? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I got a car. I'm blessed. I got a house. I'm blessed. I got a good job. Preacher, I'm blessed. Is that really what it means to be blessed? No. Bible tells us in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, and stands not in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is where? In the law of the Lord. Blessed are those or they whose iniquities are forgiven. Amen. We're blessed if we have things. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But that's not the definition of being blessed before God. To truly be blessed and to truly have what is called prospering, true prosperity, doesn't come with diamonds and gold and things. Anybody can get those things. But not everybody has the peace of God and peace with God because their sins have been forgiven. And they've laid them down at the cross. And accepted Jesus as Lord. Amen. That's the greatest message Amen. of the snow today. Amen. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Amen. God was telling the people, if you just come and reason with me, and just hear the deal that I have to give to you, you don't have to remain, he said, red as crimson, dark. You don't have to remain this way. But if you just come to me, God was saying, come to me. They can be made as white as snow. There's things, there's habits, there's sins that people are struggling with this morning. Yes. Things that people have a hard time with. Mm -hmm. yes. And like a stain and a garment, they, they try. Mm -hmm. They try to get it out. Mm -hmm. They try to get it out. You know, I've done it in my white shirt. I got 
ketchup or mustard, mustard's the worst. You try to get it on your shirt, you try to rub it out, wash it out, hot water, cold water, hairspray, all the, all the home remedies and hacks that people have to get it out. It doesn't work. Some of them might work. But what you need is pure sap from a cactus from the Middle East. And whatever. You know what I'm talking about, people try. They try by their works, right? They try by their good works to make themselves feel better, make themselves more righteous. They try by their good deeds. They try by trying to uh, uh, overwhelm the scales. <laughs> if my good outweighs my bad, then I'll feel better. I'll be a good person. That's not how it works before God. You've got to come to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. He made the only way. Yes. And that was by the blood that he shed. Amen. It's a miracle that the red blood of Christ can wash away our unclean sins and make us as white as snow. Amen. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold <laughs> from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. This is all my hope and peace. This is all my righteousness. Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. If you try to do it any other way, it will not get the stain out. It will not get to the source of the problem. I'm glad God gives us a solution today. Where we can get right to the source of the issue. As we surrender today to Jesus Christ, let the message speak to your heart today. God gives us redemption. God gives us hope. Amen. Amen. He gives us hope. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes today in reverence to the Lord as we turn the service over to Jesus. The time of prayer, the time of worship. Father, we thank you today for your help. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, God, that your, your goodness and your mercy endures forever. And Lord, right now, there's a soul. Right now, there's somebody that needs help, needs forgiveness, needs pardon, needs strength, Lord. Lord, we all need you right now. We need you in this service as we humble ourselves, God, at the foot of the cross. Father, bless and meet every need for your glory. Save the soul that's nearest hell, Lord. Help us today, Lord. We want to be washed, Lord. We want to be cleansed. And we know that Jesus is the only way. And God, we come to you right now. Have your way in us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, confirm your word, we pray. Oh, hallelujah. God, have your way. These altars are open for prayer. Let's come, church. Find a place to pray. Let's come and gather around this morning. Let God touch you. Let Him help you today. Let Him help you today. Only He can do it. Only He can do it. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. If you need some cleansing, if you need some help, let the blood of Jesus make the difference this morning. Jesus, meet the need. 
in the snow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's been good to be in the house of God today. Amen. We thank God for His word, for His yes. mercy. Amen. 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 For His goodness. You go with God. God, God, loves God will do what? Go with you. Go with you. Amen. Amen. He will. Amen. Amen. He'll, he'll even come back with you to church tonight at 630. Amen. Amen. 630 worship, Bible study on Tuesday. Don't forget our schedule throughout the week. Gift exchange and different things going on. Remember to slow down. Yes. Not just for the snow, but this Christmas. Yes. Amen. Amen. This Christmas. Slow down. Amen. Right? Appreciate the similarities. And don't allow the differences to separate you. Amen. Right? And most of all, remember that the sin-cleansing power of Jesus' blood. Amen. Amen. And that's why he came. Amen. Amen. God bless you is our prayer. We love you. We'll see you next time in the house of God. Amen. 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 Amen.